Welcome to another episode of the Otago Chemistry Channel. This week we're going to be looking at chemical reactions, which are reactions which make brand new chemicals, some of which are quite spectacular to witness. Take this reaction for example. We start with some hydrogen peroxide. Now as you'll see in a minute, hydrogen peroxide is a clear colourless liquid. It's important to use concentrated hydrogen peroxide for this experiment. We're using 30% concentrated. Now, the second chemical we're going to use for this reaction is potassium iodide. Potassium iodide is a nice white solid. These two substances are known as our reactants, as they're the two chemicals we're putting into the chemical reaction. Now let's see what happens when we mix those two together, Jeff. Now there are several observations you can make about this chemical reaction. Firstly, where did all that brown colour come from? It certainly wasn't there before. That colour shows that we have made a brand new chemical. Did you notice the bubbling and steam given off by the reaction? That shows that the reaction has produced a gas. This reaction also produces a notable amount of heat. So what's going on in this reaction? Well, the potassium iodide causes the hydrogen peroxide, that's H2O2, to decompose into water and oxygen. The intense heat given off by the reaction causes some of the water to boil. That's why you see steam coming out of the top. Now the brown colour is due to some of the potassium iodide being oxidised into iodine. Iodine you may have seen around the house is sometimes used as disinfectant and is an orangey brown liquid. Now, since this reaction produces a lot of gas, we can make it much more spectacular by adding some dishwashing liquid. Once again we add the hydrogen peroxide. This time we add just a small amount of dishwashing liquid. And now watch what happens as we add the potassium iodide. The dishwashing liquid has trapped all the gas given off by the reaction as a thick foam. Look, you can see all the steam given off due to the intense heat of this reaction. You can also see all the brown colour from the iodine formed. That's quite messy, Jeff. But I think we can go one better, don't you? Hmm. To really do this reaction in a spectacular fashion, do it in a volumetric flask. Once again, we add the peroxide, small amount of dishwashing liquid, and finally, plenty of potassium iodide. Get ready to make the observations that you see. I'm afraid you're going to have to clean that up now, Jeff. <laughs> now you might have heard of that experiment called the elephant's toothpaste experiment. It's a good one, since it's quite spectacular. There are lots of observations to make, and the chemical equations are quite simple. But do be careful. That foam that you make contains a lot of hydrogen peroxide, which will burn and stain your skin. Oh, I see Jeff was sensible. Oh, this is going to hurt. Right, 
Now we'll go on to some experiments that the whole class can enjoy. Wow. As with all chemistry, it's important that everyone wears safety glasses throughout the whole laboratory. Experiment 1. Measure out 10 milliliters of sulfuric acid. Pour that sulfuric acid into a boiling tube. Now add a 2 centimeter strip of magnesium. Watch carefully and record down any observations you make. The magnesium has been dissolved by the sulfuric acid to form a solution of magnesium sulfate. The bubbling you can see is due to hydrogen gas being given off from the sulfuric acid. You can test for hydrogen gas by holding a burning splint over the top of the boiling tube. Since hydrogen gas is explosive, you should hear a nice pop sound. Experiment 2. Add a spatula load of copper carbonate to a boiling tube. Next, add 10 milliliters of dilute sulfuric acid. Swirl the tube and record down any observations you see. The copper carbonate is being dissolved to form a clear blue solution of copper sulfate. This also results in bubbling, as carbon dioxide is given off by the reaction as well. There's one more product that's formed by this reaction, and this can be easily identified if we look at the chemical symbols for our reactants. Copper carbonate is CuCO3, sulfuric acid is H2SO4, copper sulfate is CuSO4, and carbon dioxide is CO2. Just like a mass equation, a chemical equation must always balance. The reactant side has to equal the product side, so our third product must be H2O. You probably know this as water. A drink refreshing for young and old alike. Experiment 3. Take a spatula load of copper carbonate and add it to a boiling tube. Heat the copper carbonate with a burner. Be careful around the open flame and make sure the tube isn't pointing towards anybody. Watch carefully and record down any observations you make. A black solid is appearing inside the tube. The solid is copper oxide, a brand new chemical being formed by the reaction. Notice how the black solid seems to float inside the tube. This is because carbon dioxide has also been given off from this reaction. Experiment 4. Measure out 10 milliliters of potassium iodide solution and 10 milliliters of lead nitrate solution. Mix the two clear colorless solutions together in a boiling tube. The mixture is cloudy due to there being a solid, a yellow solid inside. This is called a precipitate, since it is a solid that has been formed by two solutions mixing together. So where did this yellow solid come from? Let's take a look at the chemical reaction to find out. So when the two solutions are mixed together, the particles of lead and iodide can react together to form lead iodide. Since the lead iodide is not soluble in water, it crashes out of solution to form a yellow solid. The potassium and nitrate particles can also react, but since potassium nitrate is soluble in water, they remain in solution. The four reactions you have just seen work well as a series, 
which half your class can do, while the other half do this next experiment. The copper pot experiment requires the following solutions. Students will need a test tube. The idea of the experiment is to observe the changes as each chemical is added to the test tube containing the previous chemicals. Start by adding 20 drops of copper nitrate solution. Observe how it is a clear blue solution. Next add 10 drops of sodium carbonate solution. This creates a blue precipitate of copper carbonate. Now add 12 drops of hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid redissolves the copper carbonate precipitate, giving you a clear blue solution once again. Next, add 3 drops of sodium hydroxide. This will produce a blue precipitate of copper hydroxide. Then add 15 drops of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid will redissolve the precipitate, giving you a clear blue solution again. Now, this is where the really interesting chemistry begins. Add five drops of potassium iodide. A white precipitate of copper iodide is formed, as well as a brown solution of iodine. Now add five drops of sodium thiosulfate. The thiosulfate reduces the iodine to a clear solution of iodide. The white colour is due to the copper iodide precipitate, which is unaffected by this reaction. Now add 15 drops of ammonia. As you can see at the top, the ammonia is beginning to dissolve the white precipitate, forming a blue copper ammonia solution. Now this one can sometimes be a bit tricky, and you may need to add a few more drops of ammonia. And finally, success. Now, add one drop of hydrogen peroxide, and watch very carefully for the slight change in colour. The solution turns to a slightly darker blue colour. If you're especially lucky, you'll notice a bubble of oxygen gas given off as well. Now, finish off the experiment by adding 5 drops of sodium sulphide. This chemical reaction is a lot easier to see. The sodium sulphide is forming a black precipitate of copper sulphide. Ammonia is also being released. Don't panic, John. It's just supposed to smell that bad. Well, John, that really does smell quite disgusting. <laughs> so we've looked at a couple of chemical reactions today, and by the end of the class, you should have a firm grasp of how to record down chemical observations and explain them with chemical reactions. And lastly, I think you might need to have a wash, John, before going to the pub. Go on, off you go. <laughs> well, We'll see you next time on the Odago Chemistry Channel.